Sarah here. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a full day wear test using the brand new ColourPop foundation as well as the powders. So if you are interested in that, keep watching. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe before you leave so you don't miss any of my future videos. All right, let's get into it. I asked you guys yesterday over on my Instagram if you would rather see the ColourPop foundation and powders or the Dior Backstage foundation first and ColourPop won what is it, 64 to 34%. So that is why we're here. If you guys wanna say in future videos or be able to vote on that kind of stuff, you can follow me on Instagram. My, it's just my name, at Sarah Brittany. It's down here somewhere, so you can definitely follow me there. The direct link is also down below in the bottom bar. But this is my very first wear test. Usually I will test out a foundation for a while and then do a full review on it. So this is going to be, well it already is because I finished my makeup. This is the first time I'm wearing this foundation and Obviously, I will check in with you guys throughout the day, but let's get into the actual product, the packaging, my initial thoughts, and then I will show you guys me putting it on. This is the outer carton of what the foundation comes in. I think the packaging is super cute, and yeah, I just love it. I did pick up two shades because buying foundation online is hard, and I just wasn't sure, so I got light 75 and medium 90. And this is what the actual package looks like. It's a glass bottle, which I think is really cute. Um, I like the stars on it. It does have a pump that locks. You can just twist it to lock it. I was a little surprised that they didn't have a little cap on top of them because I don't. I just don't know if I trust this. And I've used it once, and you can see on the cap already, it's a little bit dirty, and so. I don't really want to put this in my makeup bag if I'm traveling. So that's kind of like my only complaint off the bat, but I do like the glass bottle. I like the pump. Good to go on the packaging. These retail for $12 each, and I'm just gonna pull up the ColourPop website and read the claims. So it says, no filter matte foundation. Developed for the selfie age, our full coverage natural matte foundation delivers flawless looking skin from day to night. The oil-free lightweight formula blends smoothly and is easily customizable to create the coverage you want. Build it up or shear it out. It was developed with innovative soft blurring pigments to discover true color while looking and feeling natural. The lockable pump is as easy to use and keeps your routine mess free. As always, 100% cruelty free and vegan. So those are the claims. This foundation does come in 42 shades, which I think is absolutely amazing. On the website, if you are choosing your foundation, I like that you can search by skin tone and undertone. So under skin tone, you can do all or fair light, medium, medium dark, dark, or deep dark. And then you can even go by undertone, either all or neutral, warm, cool, or you can pick what's my undertone and they will tell you how to figure out what your undertone is. I think that's so amazing to do. It just makes it so much easier, especially because you're buying online so it's hard to do a foundation match in the first place. But a lot of times if I'm online, I will actually Google which shades of a certain foundation have neutral undertones because I'm neutral and I just wanna make sure I'm buying something that's gonna actually work for me. And a lot of times, like the Ulta website doesn't have it listed by that unless it's actually in the brand's name of the foundation. Like the L'Oreal True Match Super Blendable Makeup, that their, their naming system is by neutral, cool, or warm. And so all the shades that I use are like 3N, 4N, 5N, all of them are neutral. And then there's like 1, 2, 3, C, and then 1, 2, 3, W. And so that's kind of an easy way, but if it's not in the name, it's really hard to tell. So I do appreciate that search feature on the ColourPop website. Whew, okay, we've been talking about this foundation for too long. Let's move on to the powder. First up is the No Filter Loose Setting Powder. This retails for $9. This is the outside packaging. Again, it's the same coloring and everything as the foundation, the stripes, and all of that. I got this in the shade Translucent. It does also come in Banana and Translucent Deep. I do really like this packaging. This is the inside packaging. I think it's really cute. Overall, I really like this packaging. It's plastic, it has the sifter inside, which obviously is wanted and needed. And yeah, I have nothing bad to say about the packaging. And then lastly, we have the pressed powder, which this is the box. Again, all of them look pretty similar with the stripes and the light 
neutral and then this is the inside packaging of the pressed powder and this one I got in the shade medium it does come with a mirror and then obviously the actual powder this also retails for nine dollars and this comes in six shades which are actually the categories of the different shades that you can get in the foundation so there's fair light medium medium dark dark and deep dark so i do think that it's cool that they have six shades of this powder okay let's hop into the actual demo of me applying all of these products on my face i already prepped my skin using my origins original skin matte moisturizer and the origins original skin pore perfecting cooling primer if you guys have been following me for any amount of time you know that these are both ride or die products for me so i figured these would be good ones to test out foundation underneath the foundation on top you know what i mean anyway um, I'm going to do a wear test. I've never done a wear test video before, so this will be interesting. I have a pretty long day ahead, so let's see. It is 8.51 right now. I am going to be picking my cousin up at the airport in a few hours. We're going to go over to my parents' house for a while, and then I'm not sure what our plans are later on, but I'm sure that this is going to be a very long wear test, so we will really see what this foundation does. Okay, so these look pretty dang similar in the packaging i'm gonna see which we'll just test out and see which one okay so medium 90 is much more yellow i don't know what to do neither of them really look like that good of matches i think i'm just gonna mix them and see what happens because one of them is a little orange and one of them is a little yellow so maybe together they will be a good combo. So I'm just mixing them on the back of my hand. I mean, we'll see. I also picked up their foundation brush, the F16, and straight up, I won't blend my foundation out with this, but I do like applying it with this. This is also a really good brush to apply face masks. That's what I usually use these types of brushes for. I kind of meant to apply this, um, one side at a time but that's okay i'm gonna go in with my eco tool sponge and then on the other side i'm using my um, zoeva 102 silk finish i don't really like applying foundation with brushes that's just not my favorite way to apply so i don't know We'll see if I like it better. There's a few foundations that actually do look better with a brush, but for me, I find that's pretty rare. There are definitely areas that I don't have full coverage yet. I am going to put on another layer just to see how this does build up. And this time I will be more careful and won't put it on my entire face before blending it out. Okay, the second layer definitely is going on way better than the first one. I think just because I put it on more evenly. It definitely covered a lot more as well. It's not looking matte though. I feel like you can definitely see a sheen on my face. So, not sure. I think it's supposed to be a natural matte. And I don't know if I agree with that. Okay, so that is two layers. It's definitely covering everything. I feel like it looks like pretty sheeny, shiny. I don't think this looks matte at all. So that's interesting. We'll see how it goes under all of my makeup. This is the pressed powder in medium. That looks so light for medium. That's why I ended up getting medium. Usually I would get light. And then... This is the no filter setting powder. Oh my gosh, I just shook it a couple times and so much product came out. Let's see if we can get some of that back down there. Okay, that went down quite a bit. So I don't put, 
um, concealer on my under eyes 99% of the time. So I'm just gonna set, sometimes I'll set my entire face with loose powder, but today since I do have the pressed powder, I'm gonna do my whole face with the pressed powder, but I am going to go in with the loose powder and just put this under my under eye because I do take my foundation all the way up, so I do still have to set my under eye. I hope that makes sense. Okay, that powder is definitely very brightening, which isn't a bad thing unless it has flashback. And now I'm going to go into my pressed powder with my um, Real Techniques powder brush. My under eyes look so bright in the viewfinder, so, and in person they look pretty normal, but I'm gonna put the rest of my makeup on and then I will be right back. I just finished up the rest of my makeup. This is my final look. I'll link everything that I'm wearing on my face down below in the bottom bar in case you are interested in it, but my body is definitely a lot darker than my face, which kind of sucks because I have to live my life like this today, but that's okay. So far, I think that it looks pretty good. I don't think that it's very matte, so that's interesting. And it's kind of broken up on my chin a little bit. But other than that, it, I think it looks pretty good. Um, so we will see how it wears throughout the day. Okay, it is 3.15, I don't know if you can see that. But my skin is looking pretty decent, I would say. I'm not oily yet, not anything. So I'll check in with you again in a little bit. Okay, let's see if we can get some good light here. Okay, it is. It is 5.53 and I think it looks pretty good. I'm feeling a little greasy and it feels like a little bit thick on my skin, but I haven't touched, I haven't done anything to it. So I will check in with you guys before I go to bed. Okay guys, I am back. This is my last check-in. It is, if I can get my phone to work, 10.17. So I've had this foundation on for 13-ish hours. As you can see, I kind of look like a grease ball. I'm a little bit shiny. Um, let's talk about the products. First, the foundation. Overall, I'm really impressed. I was kind of, I was hopeful, but hesitantly ho hopeful about it. And I think that it held up really well. I would never expect a foundation to last for 13 hours on my face without some kind of imperfections. So the fact that I'm a little bit greasy is fine. Um, it's not as weightless as I was hoping it would be, but I do still like it. And for $12, $12, I totally recommend it. As far as the two powders go, I really enjoyed both of them. So depending on what you're looking for, I would pick one of them up definitely. I like the color range. I think the foundation coming in 42 shades is absolutely amazing for the industry and for a more affordable brand. So if you were looking for a good foundation that's affordable, definitely check these out. And that is everything for this video. Give it a thumbs up if you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below if you have any video requests for me. I'm more than happy to test out any foundations or other products that you want. I'm actually testing out the new Dior foundation, which I asked you guys which one you wanted to see, this one or Dior first. So this one's going up first, and then I'm gonna be putting that one up next week, so stay tuned for that. Don't forget to subscribe before you leave if you haven't already so you don't miss any of my future videos, and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.